finally here. We have the Final Cut camera app. And I just got to say, I'm kind of confused. Let's talk about it. So a handful of hours ago, Apple released the Final Cut camera app, which is a free app for the iPhone, an update to Final Cut Pro on the iPad and 10.8 Final Cut version on the computer. In this video, we're gonna be primarily talking about the Final Cut camera. I'm gonna make another video over on my secondary channel, the Edit Place, talking about 10.8 for the Mac. If you wanna check that out, make sure you're subscribed in the link below. But of course, if we jump over to the phone, which by the way, you like my iOS 18 new home screen here, I'm using the Vision OS icon pack, as well as this widget. Uh, which shows me everything from the music I'm playing to kind of a collection of the weather, calendar events, and reminders. And it just accesses your reminders and calendar app to show in here. And we can see our uh, battery right there as well. Really cool widget. It's all by this guy, Loki, who is a fantastic designer. I also have his dark icon pack, which I'm obsessed with. This is my first time going light just because I've been obsessed with the Vision Pro. So I really like this icon pack. Check it out in the link in the description. But anyway, we got the Final Cut camera app. Let's open it up and see what we're working with here. And when we first open it up, uh, this is where I get kind of just like, okay, to the app store and see how Apple positions this app because that is crucial to kind of my opinion. So Final Cut Camera puts you in the director's chair with intuitive pro controls for your entire video production. So they're not just positioning this as, hey, this is an accessory to shoot multicam footage with Final Cut for the iPad. That's definitely one of the prominent features, but they're really positioning this as, hey, here's a free pro control camera app. So that's how I'm gonna judge it. So opening up, we have a very basic but pretty traditional interface. So at the top, we can see our multicam button in the top left, which we'll explore in a minute. In the middle, we have our different basic settings where we can change to ProRes. We can choose between SDR, HDR, and Log. Of course, we want Log. We can change between resolutions, but only two different resolutions, and our frame rates, which we do get between 24 and 60 FPS. You can see that my phone is damn near full again because I only have about three minutes of record time in ProRes Apple Log. In the top right, we have a very small little audio meter, which I cannot interact with in any way. Uh, looks like we have tap to focus. And then, of course, we get down to our little plus right here. This is for zooming in and out. I will say this is probably the nicest, smoothest interface for zooming in and out. I feel like in pretty much every app that I've tried, uh, zooming in and out has always been kind of jittery or you're jumping between the lenses. And so this actually feels really solid. Now, will it switch lenses or no, we're just doing digital zooms. So I do like that, that is nice. Of course, we can tap here and we can go to our three different lenses. If we wanna see more controls, I'm just gonna hit this arrow. And this is where I can choose white balance, which right now it's set to auto, but then we can go fixed. Okay, so there's some presets in here. Uh, we have exposure, which by default is auto, which we just get traditional slider. If we tap auto, it changes to manual. We can go our shutter speed. Uh, looks like there's no shutter angle, so it's just shutter speed and then ISO. We have focus, of course we have auto, we can switch between manual, kind of same design language all throughout. And then we can even lock orientation from in here. So that's pretty interesting. And we can rotate the camera, yay, FaceTime cameras included. And we can see what me media we've captured. So I'm guessing if I hit record here, looks like we can still zoom in and out. We can make some minor adjustments while recording. Now, does this also save to my photos? It does not. I can hit share and then I can hit save video. So that's a, a pro or con to some people. Uh, we do have a settings button at the top right. So if I hit that, uh, we can get a little bit more settings in addition to the codex formats. Okay, so we can shoot slow motion, just not in Apple log. We can turn stabilization on or off, but I'm guessing this is just Apple stabilization. There's no, uh, you know, cinematic extreme. And we can mirror the front camera. If we go to tools, grid aspect ratio guides, which those are like the two worst aspect ratios they could have included. Like no two, three, five. I don't know. In my opinion, those are like the worst ones to have. Overexposure indicator and focus peaking and audio input source. DJI mic two here and it automatically switches over to the wireless receiver. So that's cool. Test, test. And we can see it reflected in the top right there. 
let's check out the multicam feature. We see our iPad, I have a project open. So I'm gonna hit connect. Uh, and then on the iPad, I'm gonna choose record video multicam and we can see it's connected. The lag's not bad. I'm screen recording on both devices. That takes up quite a bit of power and juice. All right, now Michelle's actually upstairs. I'm gonna go ask her to connect her camera and we'll see if we can get two cameras going at once. So you guys chill here for a second and I'm gonna go add in hers. All right, we're not seeing it pop up. All right, so connecting it from upstairs didn't work, but as soon as I got about five feet away, the iPad showed up. So now let's see if it'll stay in range if I give her back the phone. We're on the same Wi-Fi network and everything. We'll see about Bluetooth. Oh no, I lost connection. All right, so we were attempting to do it from about 20 feet away, just up some stairs, and it looks like that's a no-go. So it's honestly surprising. I know it's using a mix of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, but that's kind of disappointing. Unless you're really in the same room, which maybe it's only intended for like podcasts and things where you're within like a 15, 20 foot clear radius for them all to work. It looks like this isn't the setup for if you say have an iPhone set up on like a tripod and you're recording, but then you want like a, oh, someone to run outside and grab a quick shot or something while everything's still connected. Doesn't look like that's gonna work. But now that we have two phones near each other and they're connected, we can see we have two different angles. Here's our record button. We can just move around wherever. If I hit record, records on both, I guess. Uh, and can I go in, I can change focus. Oh, I can make one full screen. My phone is sliding. I was like, wow, why is it doing a camera move? Can I change the other settings if I stop recording for a moment? I'm gonna stop. And so it looks like since she didn't set the camera settings to the same, I can actually go in here and set this up to match. Same thing jumping into mine. So it is nice that the person who has the iPad can fully control everything. So now you as the director essentially can make sure, okay, all the cameras are on the same settings. Now I'm gonna hit record. I can see record on the phone. It tells me my iPhone percentage. It's a cool multi-cam setup for sure. Now if I hit done, so now on the phone we can see transferring media, that was 1.2 gigs. Hers doing the same, 815 megabytes. And so we can see it in here them loading in. But the idea is that you can automatically start working with proxy versions. So if I bring this down to my timeline, I can fully start working with it. It's just a proxy file until it fully downloads at the top. That is really cool. You can jump right into an edit very quickly and we can see what the transfers are looking like from each phone. So that's really impressive. And if you have a podcast, especially one that you wanna start out, get a couple iPhones together, get an iPad, and you have a really professional multicam setup going. I'm honestly a little torn with how I want to review this app. I think every good camera video production app needs at least one standout feature that really makes it different than the rest of the pack. In the Final Cut Cameras case, it's definitely a Final Cut camera. I think they got the naming absolutely right because it is a tool to do multicam, uh, production and quick editing for mobile devices. And in that way, it's quite revolutionary. I love the fact that not only you can connect up to four iPhones, but you can fully adjust the camera settings on either the devices themselves individually, or you can hand them to people who don't understand cameras and or stick them up, mount them somewhere, and then individually record, change settings, adjust focus, all that stuff from an iPad. As long as you're within range, it's a very simple process to connect them all, pretty typical Apple standards. But I am disappointed by the lack of range. I really thought that if you were on the same Wi-Fi network that that would be the strongest point. But it looks like Bluetooth is playing a heavy part here and you need to be in either a clear line of sight or very, very close uh, to all of the main devices for this to work. So you're not gonna be able to do like one person outside way over there, one person in studio, one person in another office and have kind of this like collaborative uh, multicam thing coming in. It's really going to work best for people who are in the same studio space and you just have a bunch of different angles going. Now I know a lot of you were like me and you were also excited at just Apple coming out with a professional camera 
Ah. And if I look at it in just that capacity, and let's say you or I are not going to be using the multicam feature, I think it's obvious that the Blackmagic camera app is still going to be the most professional and the best choice out there. You get way more options for settings, for uh, just as close to the cinema camera experience as you can get on a mobile phone. That's what you get with the Blackmagic camera app, as we all know. Even other newer camera apps like Kino, in my opinion, still have a much better interface and they're trying to create a better professional camera app for a different type of everyday person, but it still is better done, again, as a standalone camera app than what Apple's done with this. In my opinion, the design interface feels a little elementary like it's, it's smooth it's fast and it's intuitive for sure but it's just really basic which is why i feel like they should have just built this in to the camera app they should have just said here's a pro mode with final cut multicam features so in the end i'm happy that the app is available and right now if i wanted to do this sort of talking head with the iphone it's nice to know that i can now have a director's monitor to where I can, you know, have my phone like this, where I can't see the screen. And then I can view myself right here, adjust focus, adjust settings, hit record and record a talking head. So if I'm by myself, if I want to podcast with multiple people, amazing. But when I go out and about and I'm filming stuff, uh, creating iPhone videos, let's just say I'm probably not going to be opening this app up anytime soon. But as always, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.